We have breaking news for you for this ABC 17 now cast. A Mizzou football player was busted for drugs overnight. MUPD say they arrested Doyle Green Beckham after finding him with marijuana in a parking lot behind the stadium. I'm talking to police, including Captain Weimer. I'll have the latest on how this will impact the season. Before the game today, I'm finding out that Coach Hayes told the guys to play like champions, and they are doing that so far tonight. The score at half is 49 to 24. The story has been Kim English. And let me show you this newspaper that I'm getting actually right now showing Albert Pujols with the wow. And let me tell you, fans are literally running down the street and they are heading to the entrance of Bush Stadium. We're talking about yesterday. A lot of the players don't know much about Missouri, but the head coaches mm -hmm. were extremely supportive of Mizzou's move into the SEC, saying that they might, might be able to walk away with a winning record. Now back here live, they already sold 3,000 tickets by this morning. They also put out a bunch of different sideline seats. As you can see, the Rock Ridge visiting section is completely full. The overflow are already sitting out there for about 1,000 seats on both sides of the end zone. And of course, Hickman is having a pretty good crowd, to say the least. It's pretty packed here tonight. It's very loud. Both teams are excited. We are three minutes away from kickoff. All throughout the day today, social media has been a buzz. A lot of people tweeting me their thoughts about it. Now, we also posted a question on Facebook. As you can see, we already have a few comments. Some in sympathy of the players, some not so much. Now, we want to hear what you have to say about it. So go ahead and like us on Facebook. The reason why we're here was because of the conference realignment that we went through last year with Missouri. And big reason why Missouri left the Big 12 was because of instability. Now, I brought that question to uh, SEC coaches to find out how stable this conference is and why. Missouri would be attracted to join in the first place. Bad news for the big Puma. I'm finding out Lance Bergman is expected to miss eight to ten weeks following the surgery he underwent today on his injured right knee. Little NASCAR action after a very long rain delay. We finally have some racing Talladega. Where are you, Ricky Bobby? <laughs> Lap 65, five-time NASCAR Cup champ Jimmy Johnson is going to have some trouble. Ah, yeah, not good. His 48 car is pushed back into garage with some oil pressure issue. No secret, Adam Wainwright's return to the mound hasn't met the expectations of many fans or himself. Falling to an 0-3 start, the last time Adam Wainwright won a game was September of 2010. Despite striking out five, Wainwright gave up seven hits over five innings and today's 6-3 loss to the Cincinnati Reds. The Royals taking on the Detroit Tigers. Which means Justin Verlander was on the mound. He has five straight wins against the Royals. Looking to go for number six. Top of the first, no score, one on, two outs. Eric Hosmer files a double deep in the wall. Puts them up one to nothing. Now in the eighth inning we go. Justin Verlander is going to get hot. He's striking out Alex Gordon. Striking out Billy Butler. And how about you, Eric Hosmer? Check out this 100 mile per hour fastball. The softball team was supposed to be where they are right now, hosting a super regional as the favorites against LSU to advance to Oklahoma City in the Women's College World Series. They need two wins though today to pull it off. Down 0-1 in the best of three series to the other Tigers. <laughs> Coach Aaron Earlywine though, says all you gotta do is hop out first, right? Well, Sounds like a plan. I know, but look at this drama. Top of the six, tight out one. Corin Genevieve is going to ground out the third. Brianna Corin is going to get caught in a rundown and taken down by Lauren Houston. She's going to gonna layer out early wine saying, what the heck? If I'm not mistaken, the home run derby is next week in Kansas City for the All-Star game. But clearly, the Royals and the Twins are practicing for it today. Just in case you missed it on Fox 22, Willingham. here are your highlights. Runner on first, two outs in the bottom of the first. Josh Willingham will hit this one deep off of Luke Hochaver. He's going to put the Twins up two to nothing. That will be his 16th home run on the season. But Billy Butler is going to answer right back for the Kansas City Royals, taking that 3 1 count into that, that thing was like shot like cannon. That's what I was surprised the most was just Billy Butler was the only guy selected. I thought Eric Hosmer maybe had a chance, maybe Mike Misakis, but maybe they're just not as popular. Right. Maybe you're not just hearing about them as much. To defend, I don't know, I'm afraid I might get hate mail if I defend Buster Posey <laughs> over Yadi Molina, but he is having a really good season after being injured and being taken out. I think maybe he got the sympathy vote a little bit. That could be. Welcome back. This Saturday, I got to spend the evening with one amazing girl named Linda Watson mm -hmm. as she attended her first ever prom at Fayette High School. Now, Linda suffers from cerebral palsy, but that didn't stop her spirit. Yesterday, TJ Moe and Corbin Bergstresser escorted Linda to prom making it one special night she'll never forget. Meet Linda Watson, one of Missouri Tigers' biggest fans, also getting ready to go to her first ever high school prom. At first she didn't even want to go to prom, 
So when we finally convinced her to go to prom, I thought, what would be the coolest thing ever as far as having an escort? Oh, yeah. So Linda's teacher started brainstorming. <laughs> After every football game, Linda would always share the highlights with her class. Linda loves MU football. She never misses um, a game. She knows the players. I think she knows the stats. She can't say them, but I think she knows them. Two names that always popped up, TJ Moe and Corbin Bergstresser. When Bridget came to me, um, I said, you know, I'll try. I thought, you know, it never hurts to ask. <laughs> so I did, and, and then this is what happened. It turns out they didn't have to try very hard. When the guys heard about Linda, they immediately said yes. You know, it's great to get off the football field and come down here and put a smile on someone else's face, you know. And what we do all this for is just for the fans anyways. And you know, as long as I can make someone else smile, make their day better, it makes my day better. I'm really excited to see her. We haven't gotten to meet Linda yet. And so we're really excited to see her face. And then we'll get to be out there in front of everybody. And so that'll be a pretty special time for her and us. With her hair and nails done and matching corsage, Linda was ready to meet her special date. Uh -oh. And the smile on her face when she saw the guys showed it all. Going to prom right, huh, Linda? <laughs> Even though there was one minor detail she was hoping for. At this point, they didn't wear their pads. Or are they buff enough? <laughs> She loves those two guys. She loves those two guys, and she's going to love them even more tonight. Well, we're excited to be here, Linda. We're excited to see you. Soon it came time to introduce Linda, TJ, and Corbin to all of Fayette. By the time they were announced, the crowd was so excited, you couldn't even hear their introduction. After Corbin and TJ showed off their beautiful date in front of the town, Big smile. that's when the fun really began. Look at that, Linda. Yeah. Check it out. After a little reapplication of lip gloss, Linda was ready for her official prom picture. And even better, her first dance. We've got our Mizzou ball players on the floor out here with our special guest. The song was Linda's favorite, Penny Chesney's The Boys of Fall, a song about playing football. And who better to dance with but her favorite players? It's just a dream come true. It is. It, uh, like I was saying, this is like, for any other kid, this is like six trips to Disneyland. She is that big of a fan. She just loves them. Linda's smile bright in the room as TJ and Corbin spun her around the dance floor. This is first and last prom. I'm just so happy for her. It's just wonderful. We would do anything for this little girl. It was in this moment that their little princess, who they call Peanut, her fairy tale came true. It was great. It was so nice to meet Linda. She had a great time. We had a great time. And we got to go out there and have a dance with her, and uh, we just had a really nice time tonight. I've never seen someone so be that much beautiful in my life, so you know, it's awesome that she's just naturally and genuinely loves this life, so it was awesome. SCC Blitz tonight. During this past week, I got to meet our one special Tennessee volunteer who has overcome some amazing odds mm -hmm. just to play football and get himself on the field this season. We was doing a pursuit drill, and he told me his knee hurt, and I told him, if his knee hurt, then maybe he should just leave and go home. Tennessee linebacker Herman Lather's tough love is not without reason. Definitely, I've had a lot of disappointments throughout my lifetime. Lathers was diagnosed with bone cancer when he was just 10 years old. It was tough growing up with what I grew up with. The cancer and treatment prevented Lathers from living a typical childhood filled with sports. And it may have stayed that way if it wasn't for his brother who put the pads on him in high school. I didn't really know much and my brother paid for a lot of camps. So I got him to think, thank for where I am today here at the University of Tennessee. It hasn't been an easy road since. As a redshirt freshman, Lathers dealt with a blood disorder resulting with doctors taking out his spleen. And then last season, Lathers was sidelined with a broken ankle. Heading into fall camp, I'm told he is about 100% healthy. Head coach Derek Dooley is happy to have him back. He garners a tremendous amount of respect from our team, uh, not just because of what he's been through from an injury standpoint, but the level of commitment that he has to being good and being a leader on his football team. Not only is he taking a large role as a veteran leader on defense, he's also taking on being a father figure for the rest of the guys. He never complains and he comes to work every day. And you know, if you, your ankle hurts or something, you got a little nag here and you see her and busting his butt and he's got a broken ankle or something like that, you can't you know, say anything to him. You just got to respect him and keep on moving. And for the man his teammates call Uncle Herm and Pop, he just wants to be as supportive for them as his brother was for him. I say uh, my college experience has been, you know, one that has gave me a lot of wisdom, a lot of knowledge to help guys and, you know, 
lead them in the right direction and the right path. And, you know, just don't let guys quit on themselves because, you know, tough times don't last, as I've always been told. Tough people do.